Hi guys, my name is Barton. Welcome to your fourth tutorial on ISO 8583. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to be creating our first field. So go ahead and create a new class called fixed num field and uh, let it implement the field interface. Okay, so this is going to be a field, right? So it's going to have an ID which stores the index. It's going to have a length. It's going to have a value encoding. It's going to have a padder of value in an encoded value, right? Uh, so after that, we need to define a constructor that takes in a configuration file, right? That takes in an instance of an ISO file. So this ISO file is going to define for us the ID, the length, the value encoding, and the padder. Okay, so this is specified in the config file so that if you want to use a different implementation you don't have to change the code you just change the configuration file and uh, restart the file the application or whatever it is that you're using right so that's why we need that okay so let me just show you an example of a config file here so this is an example of a config file so remember we are treating every message as a field so this outer field represents the whole message okay so for now we'll just ignore this because we are yet to create a compound field okay so just ignore that for now so we have an iso field here so this is going to be the first uh, field the id zero of the iso field so this in our case is going to be the mti okay this is an example of a config file. So this is the MTI. If we look for another fixed num field, we can see we have field 3 here, which is a processing code. So as you can see, it has an ID, it has a length. So the max length doesn't apply for fixed fields, so we won't use that in this case. This is the class name, the fully qualified class name. We have a padder, you know, in case your processing code doesn't fit length 6 so you can use a zero prepender so the description here is just the description and then we have the encoding for the value which in this case is ascii the length encoding doesn't apply because this length is predetermined okay so this particular this particular instance or this particular iso field is what gets passed in here so that we can get those values from the config file right so that's how it works so next we got the encode method which we are overriding from the field interface so this just makes sure this just helps to make sure that there's actually a value you're encoding uh, this is meant to make sure that the length of the content is not more than it's supposed to be otherwise we're going to throw an error so this takes care of padding okay so this method calling this particular method uh, makes sure that the length is exactly what it's supposed to be okay so this other part is where we actually encode the value so if the encoding is in bcd remember it's going to be two bytes so if for example this is an mti as you can see these are four numerals right so if this is encoded in binary then it's going to be two bytes as opposed to four okay so since we are using strings we need to read this hex value and convert it into an ascii string and then store it here so that's why we needed to create this particular method okay so if you go here you can see actually how we are doing that right uh, so if the encoding is in ascii then we just assign this value to the encoded value and we return it okay so that's it for the encode method it's basically very straightforward so when we go to the decode method this takes in the head of the message okay it takes in the head of the message so if i were to show you an example of a message uh since we are starting at the mti if the fixed num field is the mti so the head would be the whole string right starting from 0, 0800 all the way to the tail is the string that will be passed here okay 
and whatever we return is the index where the next field should start decoding. So in this particular case, we should return 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we should return 4 so that the next field is going to trip the head as this part only, right? So it goes on like that up to the tail of the message, right? So this helps us store the next head index okay that value that i'm talking about so what we're doing here we're just checking the value encoding if the value encoding is in bcd then the message is half as long right so this is just some housekeeping to make sure that the value is always an integer okay so the next head index in this case is going to be the length divided by two because if it's in binary the length is going to be half as long as it were okay so the encoded value is going to be a substring of zero to the next head index okay that's going to be the encoded value right but remember the encoded value is not what we're interested in all right so what we're interested in is the value the raw value so to get that we have to use the head, right? So since this is encoded in BCD, remember here when we were encoding, we converted hex to ASCII. So this particular place we need to do the reverse. We need to convert the head back to ASCII, right? Sorry, we need to convert the head back to hex, okay? So this is exactly what is happening there, right? So if the encoding is BCD, divide the length by two, all right? And then convert the head back to ASCII because remember, it's a numeric field, right? Sorry, not to ASCII, but convert it back to hex because it's a numeric field, right? So if it is ASCII, then it's just straightforward. The next head index is going to be the length. There's no need to divide by two because whatever the number of bytes were is going to be the length, okay? Uh, the encoded value is going to be a substring from zero to the next head index, which we just assigned here. So now the value is going to be a substring from the head to the length, okay? It's going to be a substring from the head which is zero to the length, okay? And that's going to be our next head index. So the next field down the line is going to start from four, okay? Assuming we were decoding the MTI, okay? So I know this method is not very clear, but just try to go through it once or twice and it's going to make sense. So this is binary and this is ASCII, okay? So this makes sure that the length is even you know it's not a decimal or whatever okay so the other methods are just uh, convenience methods getters and setters uh, we also uh, we are also overriding some of the methods from the field as you can see but they are just regular getters okay so that's it for this particular video uh, before we close uh, is a particular test here so i'd written two unit tests here so one was to test the encoding so you can have a look at them here all right so this is just reading the configuration file right and then uh, i convert the config file from a string to an object and then i get the first field which is the mti field zero right after that I create a field see I'm using an interface here see I'm using an interface okay and then I create an instance of a fixed num field and then I'm passing the ISO field which is the configuration then I set the value after that I encode and I get the value here okay uh, in the decode method what I'm doing is basically the same but instead of setting a value I am actually reading the log file remember this file this particular file here is the one i'm reading in here so i i read that file and then i i, I create a string out of it using this uh, this is 8-bit ascii then i create a field also 
passing the config file, right? And then I decode the lines and then I print the encoded value, right? Sorry, the encoded value. This should just be the value, not encoded value because it's basically the value. Sorry, actually it's the encoded value because uh, if I look at the config file, the encoding is in ASCII. So the value and the encoded value look exactly the same, okay? So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, well, we'll see what we'll be doing in the next video. I hope this was uh, helpful for you. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.